So the first one, I want to determine the amplitude midline and whether it has a reflection or vertical shift. So um, what I'm going to do first is look at um, the max value is 3 and the minimum value is negative 1. So halfway between that is 1. So I'm going to identify the midline of my thing here. And then I have a max here, and then just like that, and then I get through one period when I go back to that midline in 2 pi radians. And so to me that looks like, um, if I look at this equation here, it looks like a sine function uh, because it goes through the midline at the um, endpoints in, in the middle. And um, I could do that as a sine function that's upside down. So um, so let's see here. So does it have an x-axis reflection? I'm going to say yes in the way that I'm looking at this. Um, the period, uh, I can see that it completes one period in 2 pi radians. And the midline is y equals 1. The vertical shift, it shifted up one unit. And the amplitude from the midline to the maximum is a, is a length of two units. And so that is my amplitude. And so a possible equation for this graph would be y equals negative 2 sine of x. I guess we can use x. And then I want to do plus 1 because it's a shifted up 1. Okay. Um, the next one says a mill has a water wheel that has a radius of 13 feet. And the bottom of the wheel is 1 foot above the surface of the water. The wheel rotates counterclockwise starting at 3 o'clock. Let h be the height of a point p above the water as a function of the angle of theta radians. Find a formula for h of theta and sketch a graph from 0 to 2 pi radians. Okay, so um, I can see that the minimum value of p, the minimum height um, above the water, When it's at the very bottom, it says that the bottom of the wheel is one foot above the surface of the water. So the minimum height is one foot. And what's the maximum height? Well, from the surface of the water, so h is the height in feet above the water. And so, um, so we have the one foot above the water plus 13 feet for the radius plus 13 feet for the other radius. So the, the tallest point, or the, the maximum height, is going to be 14 feet. Okay, and that, in that oh, sorry, not 14, excuse me. So it's gonna be 13 plus 13 plus one. So that's 27 feet, excuse me. Um, and so I want to do the height. So the um, it's starting out at the three o'clock position, and that is at a height of fourteen feet. And then um, as it goes up here to pi over four radians, the height now is the maximum height, which is twenty-seven. And then when I am at um, pi, or sorry, pi over two was the previous, excuse me, pi over two. Uh, 
Uh, and then when I am at, so this is pi over 2 at the max, and this is pi radians. When I'm at pi radians, the height goes back to 14 feet. And then when I am uh, at 3 pi over 2 radians, down here at the bottom, the height of my point is 1 foot above the uh, water. And then when I get all the way to 2 pi, all the way back around, my height goes back to the height I started with, which was 14 feet above the water. So here's a graph of that sine function. I can see the period hasn't changed, it's just a period of 2 pi, um, and we can see that the, since we're rotating counterclockwise, it looks like uh, it's going up first and then down, so it looks like a regular sine function, but what we can see is that the amplitude and the midline have changed. So we'll have um, h of theta is equal to so what is my amplitude? My amplitude is, from the midline, it goes up 13 and down 13. So my amplitude is 13 sine of, um, and then my, again, my, my uh, period did change, so sine of theta. And then I want to do plus, um, and it looks like it's been shifted up 14 units. The next one, uh, I'm asked to find a possible formula for the trigonometric function shown um, at the right. And so what I can do then is the first thing I like to do is I like to kind of put a box around um, where everything is and try to figure out, um, so I'm going to put a box maybe like this around one period of my function. And so what it looks like to me is that this is an upside down cosine function. And if, um, if a quarter of the way through is 4 pi, then that means that halfway is 8 pi, and here would be 12 pi, and then one period would be happen in 16 pi. So the um, period is equal to 16 pi for this. Um, I can see that my midline has shifted up, so the vertical shift. My midline has shifted up five units. And then um, if the minimum is at zero, then that means the maximum is gonna be uh, I take that distance from 0 to the midline, which is 5, and I'd add 5 more, so that's 10. So uh, my amplitude is 5. And um, I think that's all. And we notice that it's, that it's, a, that it's a cosine graph that has been f had a reflected over the x-axis. because it starts at the minimum and then goes up. And so, all right, so I think I'm ready to write out what this is. So I, um, so if the period is 16 pi, that's two pi over, um, well, so what I wanna say is that y is equal to a cosine bx plus c, and so, um, the, the period is 2 pi over b. And so if I multiply um, b on that side, I get uh, 16 pi times b is equal to 2 pi. So I can divide that by 16 pi. I'm going to get b is equal to 1 eighth. Okay. And then um, a will be negative 5 cosine 1 eighth plus, and then I've shifted up 5. So that's my possible uh, formula for my trigonometric function. Okay, the next one says a population of animals oscillates between a low of 1300 on January 1st 
and a high of uh, 2200 on July 1st. So I can leave all the months there and I can see that July 1st um, is, is at 6 and so I can put the max there and the min here and uh, I, I'm assuming that it's modeled by a sinusoidal function so if that's the case then the midline would be halfway through there and it would hit that midline halfway between 0 and 6 which is at 3. So I can go ahead and kind of sketch that out. Um, all right, and so I want to find a formula for a population p in terms of time, uh, in terms of the time t in months. Okay, so one thing I might notice is that I've only drawn half of my uh, period here. Um, got nine months, and then at twelve months, at nine months it'll go back down to the midline, and then at twelve months it'll be at the minimum. So I can see here that this is an upside down cosine function. that's been reflected, or a cosine function that's been reflected over the x-axis, and then it's been shifted some more. I can see that the period is 12, and I can see that the amplitude, ooh, the amplitude will be halfway, let's see, if I do 2200 minus 1300, that's 900. If I divide that by 2, it's 450. So it's up 450 and down, and this is 450. So halfway, to, so 1300 plus 450 is 1750 would be this midline. Okay. And so the amplitude is 450, and the vertical shift is up by 1750. Okay, and so I think we're ready to write it down now. Um, so I need to find, so we're gonna do y is equal to a cosine bx plus c. Okay, so the a I can see is gonna be a negative 450 cosine of, okay, the b is related to the period. So I know the period is equal to 2 pi over b, the regular period over b, so I can um, set that equal to 12. So I can see that uh, b is equal to 2 pi divided by 12, which is pi over 6. And then my vertical shift is up 1750. Okay, and so this is my equation.